Hello and welcome back everybody to Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories Part 8 and in this episode we will be continuing on in back to Metropolis so we can go save as well as unlock the new card shop because um yeah nobody's here it looks abandoned except Jono has arrived Yay! Is this one of those moments where we have to unlock an entire region of the game just so we can get one very important singular not included by other other things item <laughs> no this is a this is a segment where we have to unlock a new area of the game so that we can go save because we need to go save oh we're trying to save the game i see I yep. see. you see some some games prevent you from pausing this game prevents you from turning the game off <laughs> Yep, we have officially moved uh, moved our cart, the card shop, and the dueling grounds into the same centralized location underneath the old card shop. <sighs> I love it how we are just joined by our present and past counterparts during these particular times. Yes. I don't know though. Tina, you guys must have genes. <laughs> it, it's really weird though because Tina specifically has got. What is effectively Tay up. A, no, no, it's <laughs> Tina. Tina's got what is effectively a, ro a royalty ca uh, caller on, and I don't <laughs> think that she would actually be royalty in this case. Well, royalty would be purple. Uh, but she's got the gold collar as well. Maybe. Maybe it's fake. All right. So the first opponent that we're gonna go uh, go after is the forest shrine. This was actually a mistake on my part. I'm just taking out low forest. Being scared. You'll never leave here alive. I'm oh, We did dark energy from mage soldier. Yay. Yay. Majin goon. Oh, Kuribo. Okay, yeah, we got Kuribo. Nah, what's Kuribo doing this game? Nothing! It is a Yay. monster, so it is a fusion it is a fusion material with fungi of the must to make dark world thorns and job change mirror to make summon skull. That's it. <sighs> well, summon skull ain't bad. It's just too bad that there are other creatures that already do the job and more quickly too. I mean I think it might be able to make Dark Elf, but like Dark Elf is not is not a good card, so. Nah, Dark Elf is not that great. Dark Elf, you might as well just play the damn thing instead of just fusioning it out. On the subject of fusion, ta-da! Unfortunately, Dark Elf is a card that we don't get access to until about Chapter 3. Yeah, I forget who we have to go farm to get Dark Elf. I think it's Meadow, Low Meadow Mage, actually. But, yeah. I've already made my peace with it. Although I like that Dark Elf had was playable in early Magic the Gathering for the longest time. Not Magic the Gathering. It's because we were just looking at Magic the Gathering cards. That Dark Elf was extremely playable in Magic Ruler and Yu-Gi-Oh! Because it had really high attack power. You normal summon it. All you have to do is pay a thousand life points to attack. You don't even have to attack with it. Just leave it in attack mode until you have an opening, practically. Or just start hammering away at your opponent, because if you hit directly for 2,000, pay 1,000, well, that's a pretty sure deficit, you know what I'm saying? And then they hit you with Fisher and Hain Hain, because that, those were the uh, primary uh, removal cards at the time. Hain Hain. Oh, I love Hain Hain. Mm, oh. Hain Hain is nice. Not as good as Man Eater Bug, but nice anyway. It's that moment when you've played the same player over and over again, and they play a card face down in defense mode and end their turn, and you say, that's a Hain Hain, isn't it? You motherfucker. <laughs> or a man eater bug. Because it could have or been a man eater bug. bug. I think I think man eater bug is it's a it's a very close second because if you have to resummon the monster, that that's terrible. <laughs> but if you kill it, then it could be monster reborn. Which is why I always looked Hain Hain over Man Eater Bug, honestly. Same with Penguin Soldier. Penguin Soldier has always been a better monster for, to me over Man Eater Bug. Penguin Soldier was amazing for the longest time. And yeah. it's a very simple thing. He doesn't just pick one card. <laughs> he picks two. And he can pick any two, any two monsters on the field. Which is very, very important sometimes. Because he can pick himself. <laughs> Prince Gurdard. 
Actually, low metal mage is one of the easiest of the of the uh, of the low mages for us to fight, and there's a reason why we're fighting him specifically. Ooh, Kama, uh, Kamakari no Kozu. Uh, Kamanari Kozu. Karen, I can't say the words. <laughs> okay. Anyway, what are we doing fighting low metal mage if we don't actually have a plan to take down Kapura yet? Well, we need to unlock low metal mage for free duel because. The rest of the game effectively is going to come down to us grinding on exactly two opponents. Low Meadow Mage so we can get Meteor Black Dragon and Skull Knight, and Pegasus so we can get Mega Morph and Bright Castle. Yay. So what's new in the world of Cloud is we do a Low Meadow Mage and summon Twin Headed Thunder Dragon for the 40th time. Oh, you know, just, uh, just do, doing my usual thing. Going back to my old reliable games, uh... Working on my seventh creation in my menagerie of Bloodborne PvP characters. And we hope you enjoy the series when that one comes out. March 20th, 2025. Not really, it's probably going to come out a lot sooner than that. Yeah. Um, see, I've, I've seen people speedrun Bloodborne, but I never thought I would be in a position where I would want to get a character up to level 74 as quickly as humanly possible because that's my PvP level. 74 usually makes it so I most frequently get PvP matchups. Ah, okay. And it takes, you know, like I told you the other day, it takes me about three hours. Two, two and a half, three hours. Which is actually really quick, but not quite as quick as it is in Digimon Cyber Sleuth, where you can get up to level 74 if they've got enough ABI in about an hour. Nice. I mean oh, I, that's mostly because of, <laughs> that's mostly because of the post game grinding area, but yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm sure Digimon saves you some time by not having you inhabit the menus. Um, only a little bit of time, honestly. Good at you'll regret this victory. I'm going no, to go not, tell also. the other hedge mages now. <laughs> Okay, so with that, we have successfully unlocked both of the major uh, opponents that we need for uh, for our next uh, couple of grinding sessions, and they will be uh, separated <laughs> into, two, into two different grinding sessions. I don't think we're showing off uh, uh, us dealing with Low Metal Mage, but I do think that yes, now we're gonna go take down Jono, uh, Jono second and, Tain, and Tina second, who have have drastically different decks, and Jono second actually has a drastically different drop pool. T Tina Second, however, does not have a different drop pool, and that uh, ac that aggravates the shit out of me. Ooh, we got a mystical elf. Nice. And a warrior yeah. of tradition. Warrior of tradition. We're up to seven shadow Without specter. the tradition. By the end of the game, expect us to have 20 shadow specter. No, we don't want to run. We just want to fast while our pills before the attack us. So Jono Second is one of the mo is one of the more important uh, duelists uh, for us to unlock for free duel because he uh, he uh, I think it's him Low Mountain Mage and Low Meadow Mage all have the ability to, for us right, to, to drop uh, and to drop Meteor Black Dragon but me uh, but Meadow Mage specific Low Meadow Mage specifically is the one that we want to farm on because he oh look at that Black Dragon because he's got the highest chance to drop it. Well, of course, because you went first, and that, that that's that... Well, okay, so Armored Zombie wasn't quite the answer that I would have liked in that situation. My situation would have been closer to, oh, uh, Mammoth of Gold Find, running over a 2,000 defense, Red Eyes, B-Dragon, which he put in defense mode because his AI would not have anticipated that I was going to play a creature that had more defense than him, so my higher attack creature could deal even more damage to him directly. Clown Zombie. One of the most fascinating cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Mostly because it's the uh, primary fusion uh, ingredient for uh, Soul Hunter, which is Clown Zombie and any reptile. Half Clown, half Zombie. That is not what Soul Hunter is at all, actually, because he's a fiend-type monster. I was describing my good friend a two-star zero defense. 1350 attack. What peculiar distribution of power <laughs> not really i mean it was the whole reason why the, why clown zombie has uh, that stat line is because of the it's very specifically because they wanted to 
uh, they wanted to have Joey have a significant victory against uh, against uh, uh, zombies using uh, shield uh, 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 sword and shield. Sword and shield would be pretty devastating at times. Now my Red Eyes B Dragon has more attack power thanks to his defense than your zombie who goes to sleep on the job. <laughs> All right, Tina. Tina is actually is although significantly more difficult than her original incarnation, still really easy because she. Oh, we got another Exodia piece. That's two of the three Exodia pieces that we can get, actually. Yeah, but we already broke the suspense on that. That the Exodia pieces are red herrings in this game at best. Yes, because you cannot get the legs. You can get both you arms and the head, Exodia! but you can't get the legs. Um. Uh, for the record, I'm pretty sure that <clears throat> Tina's shirt is dyed. That's not real gold. Um, how would they actually have gotten dyed at this point? They, 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 were, they, they had, they, trust me, they, they had dyed. <laughs> if yeah, they had clothes, I mean, yeah, they, they had dyed. They have dyed, but how would Tina specifically get it? Because it's implied <laughs> quite specifically that Tina and, <laughs> and Jono are commoners. And it's not, and it's not like you know the commoners actually have all that much wealth in order to spend on getting dyed. Hey, Megami. I mean, they could have used something basic. It's as simple as I mean, I I don't know how dye works. It's a substance. It sticks to the clothes. And I've heard of people, you know, I've known who made their own tie dye T-shirts, and all they did was just soak the clothes in water dye mixture for. X number of minutes, and then after it settled, it came out, and it was died. Behold Mammoth Graveyard, who shares a model with Great Mammoth of Goldfine. He is just Mammoth slightly Gra different colored. He is oh, silver, I see. Mammoth, Mammoth Graveyard Mammoth, has... Whereas Great Mammoth of Goldfine is gold. I give them credit for making... At least trying to make 3D models that look half-decent... Um, however, poking fun at it immensely for, uh, using the exact same model, because that is a Cyclops mammoth skeleton, grumble grumble. Cyclopean mammoth. I don't think we actually have a, a card called Cyclopean mammoth in Yu-Gi-Oh! Cyclopean skeleton. Cyclo Cyclopean and Mammoth is redundant, I would say, because Cy Cyclops is generally understood to be a giant. No, uh, but that's not actually what that what Cyclops actually means. It specifically translates to one-eyed. Right, a one-eyed giant. Mm. I don't know. Hey, Luna Queen the Sam. Well, I'm saying, just looking back at the war, I would think that because of the source material where we got the the Cyclops in the first place, that I think most people would generally understand Cyclops to be giant. Uh, but I don't think that Cyclops uh, is specifically a uh, identifier of gi of, gi of gigantism, rather uh, rather um, uh, rather an identifier of uh, the number of ocular organs it has. No, I'm not. I'm not talking about human beings. I'm talking about mythical creatures. <laughs> so, cyclopean is an adjective. You moron. 